recorded session for AI design. Zero, zero, bunch of zeros. One, good. Thank you, Michael. Catherine, is there a link to it? Absolutely. Let me get that to you right now so that you can uh, bookmark it. It's actually on my YouTube. So if you do a search for YouTube, you'll find it, but I'm going to give you a direct link right now because that's a good one to definitely keep. It's gone on quite a bit here. Sorry. All right, there you go. That goes to the directly to all of the AI webinars we've done here so far. Okay, so today is the second installment of the Design Made Easy with AI. And the reason we did that is because we ran out of time last time. Uh, we spent a lot of time with MidJourney, which is a image generation uh, program. And uh, I'm uh, gonna share my screen here. here all right okay everybody can see my screen all right just give me a yes in the chat if you can and if everything looks clear sometimes it gets blurry all right so this is mid journey um, so if you weren't with us last time, we uh, walked through all the different options and different ways and uh, initial setup if you've never used it before uh, on how to use this tool called MidJourney. And so as you can see, it uh, it is uh, quite extensive is what it's capable of. All of these are AI generated images, every single one of them unique, and they are generated by you typing in a description of the kind of image that, that you would like. So very interesting stuff. You can get very creative on what you type in to get the kind of results that you want. Okay, and you can do it in any style that you want. Some of these are, you know, more artistic than others. Some of them are kind of outlandish. Uh, some of them are very realistic. Uh, I was thinking about this one here in the upper right. You can see how realistic that photo image is and you can literally tell it that's the style that you want it to do and it can generate that uh, what's incredible about some of this stuff is as you can see in this image all the reflection and all the environment around it the fog the lighting the reflections the ripples in the water um, it's uh, quite incredible what it can do so if you didn't uh, weren't with us in the last session, I would encourage you to go to that link I had in the chat uh, for my YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see the last uh, session that we did, and we walked through all that stuff and how I generated some of my images. Um, but today, uh, because MidJourney is a, a paid application, I'm going to show you a free one, um, and then we'll go through all that stuff. Uh, and show you how to use it. And it's actually easier to use than the journey. So I'm in, in excited to show you guys that. Um, and so let me put my slides on here. Oops, my pencil is getting low. That's no good. All right. So this is Designs Made Easy with AI, part two. And uh, a little bit about me for those of you who have not been with me, a few of you have. Uh, I am, my name is Leo Chen, and I am a luxury market realtor here in Orange County, California. And I have been uh, previously, prior to my real estate career, I spent over 15 years as a corporate tech executive. That's where I get all of my, draw all of my knowledge and everything from. Um, and I've done everything from operating systems to uh, to uh, operating systems, to uh, servers, to web design to uh, web hosting and um, uh, all the stuff that you can think of with tech, I basically have done and done all the testing uh, in that time that I was uh, in that space. Um, and uh, my passion is to mastermind around business, entrepreneurship, on sales, um, and on anything technology. It's super exciting right now because um, AI is just emerged on the scene as um, something that everybody's talking about. And so it's right up my alley. And I am a founder of a systems integration ag agency where I help people integrate their systems 
into their business so that they can leverage and uh, uh, make more money instead of chasing after systems and not being able to use it. We, we integrate a lot of systems together to uh, help you guys uh, make more sales. And of course, I am a real academy instructor here, and I'm uh, scheduled to be here with you once a month, but I do have uh, other outlets where I do other masterminds and other Facebook groups that you can join where I keep you up to date with everything. So for today, though, for today, uh, by the way, there's no need to take any screenshots, uh, do any kind of recording or taking photos or anything like that. I'm going to give you everything that we talk about here today. Um, it's it's going to be in a web page that I'm going to send you a link at the end. I'm going to give you a QR code. You'll get all that stuff. You'll get all the slides. You'll get all the links of everything that we talked about so that you don't have to chase around for it or or ask me, hey, what was this one tool or that one tool? Uh, everything's going to be super transparent. I'm going to give you uh, all the resources that you'll ever need and sometimes even more. And it'll allow you to also join my Facebook group or uh, my workspace workplace group you know, for AI as well so that we can stay connected after this and you can get notified of any of the other webinars I'm doing. But for today, uh, I'm going to share with you just a little uh, higher level of the AI design landscape you know, what are the players all involved and what it all looks like so you can get a good sense of how to look at this stuff so that you're not confused when a new tool comes up and whether you should use it, whether you should not use it. Really, we're just going to break down, you know, the tiers for you so that you know, like, hey, this is tier one. I'm really interested. In this is tier three. This is something I just want to play with once in a while. Okay. And secondly, I'm going to show you guys what Leonardo AI does, which is similar to what I showed you earlier with Midjourney to be able to generate images. Then I'm going to show you Firefly, which is an Adobe product, a new Adobe product that helps uh, you guys uh, manipulate any kind of images that you have. Uh, so instead of Photoshop, instead of Illustrator and all those complicated tools, you can use Firefly. I'm going to show you the capabilities of that. And then going on beyond that is Canva. Um, just, just for a show of hands, anybody using Canva on a regular basis right now for all their collaterals, their designs, uh, anything like that, or their social media posts? Just uh, give me a one if you're using it. Awesome. Almost all of us. I see no zeros. Awesome. Good. Uh, so that's going to be super cool. If you're not using Canva's new AI tools in there, I'm going to show you uh, the five things that you can do to uh, leverage AI in Canva to really create uh, more images and create more designs that you didn't maybe you didn't think of before. And then number three, uh, there's a lot of niche AI tools out there and literally thousands of them by now. Um, but I want to show you just some of the few. We're going to show you how to design uh, your own logo. We're going to show you how to be able to do um, automated uh, presentations, do automated uh, web, web website design so that you can just basically punch in a few words and get a full website. Okay. And then uh, lastly, I'm going to uh, also show you uh, how to, how to do uh, what's called stable doodle. So basically you can make a drawing and it can come together as a photo. So that's, it, it's really hard to describe, but I'm going to, you're, it all makes sense when I show it to you. And then lastly, all the slides and resources that, as I mentioned, I'm going to share with you and give it to you, you know, at the end so that you can uh, bookmark it and uh, for future references. So if that's cool, uh, give me a yes and we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Colin. Hey, Beverly. Great to have you. Okay. So this is, this is all you really need to know right now in regards to uh, AI for design applications, okay? And I've broken them down here in tiers because it's really important to understand the tiers. A tier one is your platforms. These are the major players in the space where they're doing a lot of heavy lifting and some of the greatest uh, inventions are happening in these three models. And these models are Midjourney. Midjourney is a image generation. You type in the text, you get an image back. Okay. Um, stable diffusion is also similar uh, to that. 
Uh, these three are really the big players in, in image generation through text. Okay, and they are going to, what's gonna happen is a lot of the other applications will use their platform to generate images, but you know, layer their, uh, their brand on top of it. But if you can use any of these three, uh, you are in good shape. You can basically do anything possible uh, in today's world. Uh, but we went through mid journey on the last, last session, as I mentioned. So it's a good one to uh, go and uh, watch through even at a, you know, one and a half speed so that you can see uh, exactly what's happening there. Uh, we're not going to go through stable diffusion in DALI. Uh, stable diffusion is a free uh, software that a lot of people are using to uh, generate images. I believe uh, Canva is using stable diffusion for their AI image generation. Okay, so the next tier are the people who are uh, catering to the consumers. Okay, your photographers, your videographers, and stuff like that that are used to using Adobe, they're going to start using Firefly, which will allow you to easily uh, manipulate images and change things much more easy, easier than uh, Photoshop and any of the applications they have. It's really kind of a shortcut. And when we, when I start demonstrating uh, Canva for you, some of the AI tools, it Firefly will do the same thing. So you'll get a good sense of what it is capable of. And then tier three are all your uh, niche applications, okay? Uh, they do specific one thing really, really well. And it's possible that some of these applications are gonna get bought out by the big companies such as Google, okay, Microsoft, and any of these bigger companies, what will happen is they'll end up buying them out so that they can have those tools in under their belt for their suite of things that they offer. Okay, so for today, we're gonna focus on this aspect of it because we've already covered mid-journey. Okay, and so I have a question for you guys. Do you think that technology is hard? Okay, feel feel free to unmute if you're more comfortable, you know, talking in into your mic or just put put it in the chat. Do you think technology is hard? Yeah, some things it can be sometimes. Beverly, yeah, technology is hard. But it shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be. Yes and no. Uh, Kristen, would you like to unmute and tell me why yes and no? I think there's some things that people can pick up very easily and other stuff, depending on how your brain works, is just like impossible. Yeah. So so give me a give me a, uh, an example of what 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 might be impossible or hard that looks hard. Well, all of the stuff that you're teaching, I feel like oh. unless somebody taught it to me, there's no way I'm going to figure this out on my own. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's really difficult to kind of jump in the middle of the game. Um, I've had a lot of foundations over the years, and so I can put these this stuff into perspective very quickly. And when you don't have context, like you just feel lost, like, well, what is this and what's that? And so my job here is to just kind of help you understand some of it, but most importantly, just show you what's possible. Because if you don't know what's possible, then you really are just completely out of the game. Sometimes, uh, so Shada, hopefully I said, said that right. Uh, sometimes I spend more time trying to figure it out. That's right, that's right. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing these webinars so that you don't have to figure it out, to just kind of give you a sense of everything, okay? And um, I spoke to some of you, some of you, I won't say their names, Maya. Uh, we we talked about there's some things that you should know how to figure out, and then there's other things, okay, you shouldn't. Like you shouldn't have to spend your time trying to set things up so that you can, you know, do designs. You should just be able to have some have it set up for you, has it re have it ready to go, so that you can just do the core work, right? And that's that's exactly, you know right what Shada says is that hey i don't want to spend time figuring out i just want to do the work and get the result i want to do the creativity part of it and get the result that i want so yes you know i i agree with all of you technology is hard it's it's hard for me as well for some of the new stuff that i don't understand i'm not naturally a coder so anything with code is super hard to me okay but nowadays with all this ai it can actually do the coding for you you just tell it what you want to code so that's really exciting too. So we can talk about that another time. Okay, so to help you guys understand 
the stuff so that it's not, it doesn't feel so hard, okay, is I put together this grid here, all right, and on the left side, this way, these are the things that are hard, okay, and this is the, the easy spectrum going up, okay, and then some things are hard and need a lot of training, right, and then other things, okay, we want low training, so our goal here is really to be in this quadrant, right? It's low training and it's easy to do, okay? So that's our goal here, but you can see right now, I've mapped it out for you. Coding, okay, coding is hard and takes lots of training, right? People spend years just learn how to code. Uh, Photoshop for image uh, generation or manipulation, okay? It needs a lot of training, right? You gotta click like 20 buttons to get like one result. Um, Illustrator, you have to learn how to draw on an iPad and know all the options so that you can draw exactly what you want. It's difficult. It's not like picking up a, a paintbrush and just start painting, right? Photography and videography, super hard, right? It's not just pointing the camera at things. You actually, you know, have to know how to frame, how to comp uh, uh, compose a shot. You have to know the environment. You have to know the lights. You have to know all kinds of stuff. If uh, if any of you, any of you ever tried doing photography or videography, you know, like it's not as easy as they make make it seem. Okay, but I would say it, photography probably doesn't need as much training <laughs> as coding, right? And then we have WordPress. Uh, anybody have ever tried to build their own website, like from WordPress or anything else? Like, just give me a yes, I'm, yes or no. I mean, it's not easy, right? It's not an easy thing. Now it's gotten easier, okay, but it's still technically not easy. And if you know how, it's complicated. It, yeah, even a couple of years ago, it's yeah. not easy because it it requires multidiscipline. You need to know, like, hey, what, where should the image? Uh, you know, it's it's designed where you need to know where the image reside. You need to know the code, and then you need to know you know a copy, you know what to actually write there, and then how how do you tell the program where you want to put what, and does it look right, right? And sometimes you know we slap everything together. I'm sure you guys all have seen websites just somebody slapping some text and you know images together, and nothing seems cohesive. So it's not easy. So it requires a lot of different type of skills. And so I was thinking about it uh, when I was putting this together, like what is actually, you know, easy to do, but needs a lot of training. Being a realtor, right? Anybody can get a license. Like it's easy to study for a license and, and, and pass the test, right? It's easy to do, right? But it's actually a lot of training. You guys know in sales, like it's not easy to acquire new clients, right? So I put it in that quadrant. And then what is low training, but you know not easy to do? Okay, social media stuff. You don't need any training. You pick up your phone, you start typing in something, you upload a, a photo that you just took. Right? It's easy. Right? It's easy to it's 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 easy to do. Doesn't need a lot of training, but it's hard when you want to have a really engaging, a really well ran, you know, social media account. Instagram, TikTok, or whatever, you have to shoot the video, right? It's easy to get started, but it's hard to do, right? Uh, creating presentations on Keynote or, uh, 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 or uh, you know, on, I forget what the, I don't know, I'm having a, having a brain meltdown here on uh, the Microsoft's uh, presentation software, but easy to do, right? Photoshop. Easy yeah, PowerPoint. There you go. Or PowerPoint, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. PowerPoint. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's easy to just open it up and start putting stuff together, right? But it's hard to do it right, and it's hard to do it well. Now, those things have gotten easier over time, right? Uh, as you had more resources on getting images and writing good copy. You know, everybody here now have been writing copy, so it's getting better at it. But, you know, you don't need a lot of training to just open up and use them. Same thing with some of these uh, video editors. You can open it up and you can start, you know, uploading videos and kind of put stuff together but to, to actually cut it up right to make it really like film quality production and stuff like that. It's really hard. So it's low training to start, but it's hard to do. Okay. And again, what we're shooting for now with all the AI tool is getting up into this upper right-hand quadrant. 
So all of these AI tools are easy to do and require no training, no coding, no nothing. Okay, and so that's what we're focused on here with this AI webinar is to show you how to actually do that because it's actually a slightly different skill set. Instead of taking a photo, okay, you are actually telling the program, hey, I want a photo of this item, of that item, of this thing or that thing. So you're describing it. Okay, so it's a little bit of different skill set. But the main thing here is no coding required, right? We all love that, right? So it's a, it's helping people that don't have any coding experience to be able to do a lot of things that we previously were not able to do unless we knew uh, a lot about how to do this, okay? So I wanna put that into perspective for you guys and hopefully that uh, this diagram is helping you uh, kind of categorize things as you continue to discover more AI tools, all right? So let's uh let's get started on some demonstrating here how we do that okay so let me share my okay here's my browser this is leonardo ai okay similar to midjourney and you can see how i have generated some images here and so you can see what the possibilities are and you'll also be able to see right here, let me highlight right here, here's the prompt instruction that I put in. A cute chubby puppy in a superhero outfit. And these are all the different images that they created. So pretty good, you know, pretty good. I, I you know, without having to dress up my dog, I could have an image like this. Um, here I was looking for a, you know, a cool, fun photo of a, uh, of, a, of a futuristic house. So futuristic residential home in California. And I told it, hey, do it in a photorealistic style. And so these are all I came up with. A woman who lost something, which is kind of more of a emotional descriptive, but it did it, right? It's looking, the woman's uh, facial expressions looking kind of lost, looking up, unsure. So it can really build these uh these emotions into the photo. So really you just have to know how to, you know, write in English and write the phrase that you, of the image that you want in, in a descriptive word. So here <laughs> I wrote, a dog ate my notebook and this is what it came up with. So not perfect, but this one's actually eating the notebook, I think. <laughs> So th this is what's possible. So when you guys are doing some social media content, you can actually generate your own images without having to go look for an image or take a photo yourself. So just for fun, just for fun, I like some volunteers here. If you guys can type in the chat a prompt that I could put in here so we can generate some images. Who, who wants to who wants to shoot in? Go ahead and put in the chat chat a a prompt that you would like to see. Or just unmute and tell me what you would like and I'll I'll type it right in. Anyone? Anyone? Maya? Sorry, I was out talking to my son. Oh, no worries. Uh, Want to give me a prompt? Oh, um, how about a hippo wearing a tutu holding a flower? <laughs> I don't even know how to spell tutu. T T U T U T U. Oh yeah, T U. What was it? What was the last part? Uh, holding a flower. All right, super creative. What happens when you have a kid? <laughs> yep, definitely make you creative. So we're waiting for it to generate here. It's gonna generate four versions. Okay, Colin, a couple bought a new home. Perfect, I will put that in next. 
But while we're waiting for that, you can see kind of all the options you can have. You can have the different numbers of, of images that you would like, different versions. <laughs> I don't know if that's a hippo. Oh, I put hippie. hippie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is accurate. So it's totally accurate. That is pretty funny though. <laughs> that's very accurate. I made a typo and then put hippo. I put hippie. I like it. Yeah. That works for so me. holding a flower, perfect. Wearing a tutu for sure. <laughs> right? It's awesome. So here on the left here, you have all your options here. You can have different prompts, magic strength. That means it'll be more creative or less creative. Okay, I'm gonna skip over some of these technical stuff, but you know, it can boost the boost the contrast, you know, of the photo. Um, if you don't know what some of these are, resonance is the scale. I mean, it gets a little technical here, but if you don't know, just don't worry about it. You can um, have it do it in uh, different resolutions. Okay, and you can set your sizes here. That's super good. And then, uh, so those are kind of the general options you have. And then up here, I wanna show you up here, you can actually uh, do the different styles. You can do it environmental style, creative style, anime style. Okay, so you can do it in all these different styles. So if I do an anime style, I don't even know what's gonna happen here. Oh, this is a paid, this is a paid option. So we all need to do that. Okay, so uh, let's do another one here and then we'll move on. A couple bought a new house, all right? It's a little vague, but let's see what it comes up with. I do like the hippie though. All right, there you go. This is a perfect marketing image for homes like this one is like perfectly done this one looks more casual like you actually took the photo and just bought the home right now if you could have put in here um holding a sold for a sold sign you know maybe it'll do that actually let's give that a try okay i just got my money's worth out of this entire session i'm realizing <laughs> that when i spend 10 minutes looking for a photo i should just make it that's right. No, okay, got my money's worth. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, Jada, this is um, this app is free. Um, you can see here on the upper left hand corner, it says thirty four. This is how many tokens I have left to use. So every day, it'll give you a certain amount of token. I think I started out uh, earlier in the day with a hundred tokens. So just the two two sets of prompts that we gave it it dropped from 70 to 34. So when you run out, then uh, then you can't use it anymore until you upgrade or you wait till the next day. So, but uh, for, for starters, you guys should just uh, try it out, but it's really easy to use, right? You just put in your prompt here and then here's what you'll get. Okay, so it's really not very good at uh, text and stuff. So it didn't know how to do for sale, you know, sold, but it did try to make a sign. Okay, so if it's not what you like, you can always regenerate it. Okay, so you can always uh, redo it and say, hey, generate again. So it'll do it again. So one thing that I do um, is when I get everything that I want, but like the wording is not quite right, that's when you can utilize one of the other programs. You can do it, drop it into Canva. You can go in and erase that one section, replace it with white, and then create for sale on your own and place it on there. So you That's can manipulate right. it once you download it. Yeah. So yeah. There, it really, that in mid journey is horrible. They yeah. don't spell. Yeah, per per they don't perfect. Know words. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't know how to do that yet, but in the future it will know better how to do it that. Will. Like perfect example <laughs> right here is this first photo. You could just easily erase this and then type in, you know, for sale, whatever you want. Okay, but some of these are, you know, super interesting. But uh, but this first version I really like. Like literally, you could have just go to Canva and just added a sign here. You know, so, uh, but the hippie is super sign. fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, okay. Um, so next, I want to show you guys is uh, with the, the this is a perfect segue into the uh, the image editing part of it is uh, this program called Adobe Firefly, and uh, what it does is it allow you to be able to edit your photos. Uh, that you generated okay I, I what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do is just kind of show you this video real quick and again all of these links are in the uh in the 
in the page I'm going to show you. So you can see right here. Uh, it Sorry, can what also... was the name of the last app? Was it Leonardo AI? Yeah, okay. yeah right here, Leonardo.ai. And it'll, it'll come right up when you type it in. But again, I'll have all the links for you, so not to worry. Okay, so here is uh, Firefly. To, for starter, it does the same thing Leonardo does. Um, every company now is all going to have text to image because that's where everything starts. So you can see they type in a, a text and then they get, see, here's the description. They hit generate and you can get it in all different kinds of styles. And here are all your options and you can change it into all different things. You can extend an image. This is a newer option where you have an image that doesn't have the sides and it will add in the different environmental sides uh, for you. In painting, uh, which Canva also has, is that you can select an area and then ask it what you want from that area. In this case, a red jacket. So it created a red jacket and added in. So I want you guys to know that it isn't just about it isn't just about creating the image. You can also edit it afterwards, just like that. So again, no coding, no Photoshop training uh, required. You just have to know how to select and use a mouse and type in a description what you want. So that's the other option on editing. Previously in Photoshop, it would take you probably, you know, 10 minutes or even sometimes half hour to, you know, bring that in if you wanted to add the... Uh, and this is interesting. Uh, here's all your options for the photo. You select an area and you can ask it to smile. You can change the age of his face. You can change the eye direction where he's looking. So all of these details that you could do. So all it requires is a mouse and be able to you know, drag stuff over. And so something like this is for real estate, sunlit living room with modern furniture and large window. So now it generated all these different uh, images for that. Good for you, Maya, you can use them. And then this is a little more advanced if you wanna do 3D imaging, is that it can uh, generate a 3D uh, model from it. And from that, you can edit it with whatever ap application you wanna use. And then this is text to template, meaning you can write a text of what you would like and it would create a design template for you, which Canva also does. And we'll show you that as well. See all these different templates that it can create based on your prompt. And then same thing here, you can have a image that you already have, say of a dog, and then you can ask it to put on a Santa hat, for example. So this is editing by putting in a prompt. So that's what makes it much easier than what you had to do before in Photoshop, for example. So to be and clear, text. you can edit existing images with Adobe Firefly? That's right. Oh. And you can do that in Canva as well. Okay. So the reason I bring up Canva and Firefly because they're closely related as far as uh, uh, image editing. And so I'm going to show you some of these uh, these functions in Canva because I, I do have a paid Canva account. I do not have a paid Firefly account, but I wanted to show you guys an example of what this does. Okay, so this is creating a image into a vector, which is more like an illustration uh, uh, image that you can stretch and open, uh, such as logos. Logos are usually vector. Okay, you can see what it's doing. It can take a vector and it can you can literally manipulate this image however way you want. So same thing. This is a, along the lines of what you talked about before is being able to uh, put in your own images and combine them with other images. So what it did is these three images it had, it took them and you can drag and drop and combine them. So all of these are 
you know, more, more functions that you can use as you learn how to use these tools more and more. But you see, it's super easy, right? All it is is just point and click. So this is really nice because if you guys ever had images where it's just, you know, too small and you can't, if when you stretch it out, it gets all pixelated because it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have the resolution. What upscaling is, is be able to take that and be able to upscale it using AI, meaning it's going to put more pixels in there to get you the result on the right. So even if you had an image, if you had an old image that was, say, 30 pixels by 30 pixels, and you needed to be, say, a 10, 1080 uh, pixel image, you can use upscaling, and it'll stretch it out. And by using AI, it can figure out how to fill in these spaces so that you have no pixelated uh, image anymore. So that's really useful. Okay, so that's the suite of tools that Firefly does. Um, and again, I have this link for you and you guys can take a look at this page if you want and kind of explore all these different tools that it has. All right, so you guys ready to do some image manipulating with Canva, some editing? Yeah, ready? Michael, cool. You're already creating images. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's jump right in here. These are these are the tools that uh, Canva Canva AI uh, has: text to image, magic erasers, which is allowing you to be able to erase the sign from our previous example there. Magic edit to be able to change that sign into something else. Magic write, meaning like it'll help you write the caption, help you write a title. Uh, magic design, it will uh, be able to change stuff uh, in the image. Presentations, uh, just like PowerPoint, it can create a presentation for you using AI. Beat Sync is a um, audio tool that allows you to put together video, add music, so that the beats of the music can sync with your video. And then, of course, it can translate into all different kinds of languages. For those of you who are in real estate and you are creating flyers and things like that, you can have it translated in, say, Chinese, Japanese, or whatever, so that you can cater to um, other languages as well. So what I wanted to do is kind of first show you, because since all of us, almost all of us, have um, used Canva, uh, we can kind of work into some of the Canva stuff here. Let's see. Canva. All right. So the first is text to image. Um, if, you, if I create an image here, I believe. Text image. Okay, so I click on this button called text to image, and you guys can find it in the options. I can put in exactly what you guys had before. Uh, a couple bought a new home. Let's see what Canva comes up with. Holding a for sale sign. Okay, create. This is the paid Canva, right? Yeah, yeah. And and honestly, it's pretty cheap for what you get. I think it's I think I paid 20 bucks a month or 15 bucks, one of the two. Okay, so it got kind of close. It did have for sale and it did have the couple. And this one here, almost the for sale, but you got a home in front of it. Okay. My preference is to generate all that stuff in say Leonardo, which is a higher quality or mid journey because it's just a better image generator and then bring that into Canva. So that's text to image. All right, next we can look at a magic eraser. So if we want to erase something in here, uh, let's see. Oops. We want to click on our image. We want to click edit. And then first thing is click on magic eraser. And then if I select this here, it should just remove the sign. 
So let's see. All right, sign's gone. Okay, not the greatest image because their face is kind of messed up, but that's why you learn to appreciate Mid Journey because of how, how what what a great job they do on the faces and things like that versus uh, something like something like this. Okay, so that's why we would generate that from there. And uh, want to show you next what we can do here is uh, background removal, which we all have probably seen. So I'm going to just upload a photo of myself here. Okay, here's a photo of me I took at a showing. And if I don't want this background here, I can go ahead and just say, click edit, click background remover. And there we go, the background is gone. Okay, so now I can fix this and put this in the middle. And if I wanted to, I can put a background to it. And there we go. Okay, so that's the background remover in case you guys have never used that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So we learn how to remove items, remove background, magic edit. So you can actually turn something into something else. So let me see what a good example here. Okay, so I've got this photo here of my puppy. And what I'm going to do is just start a new one. Um, and here's my dog, Lucy. And I'm going to edit. And I'm going to do a magic edit. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an area. Let's uh, change the sign. So instead of the sign, I can replace it with something else. So for example, I can say coffee, coffee side table. Okay, so instead of sign, we're gonna ask it to create something else in place of it. There you go, put, it put a coffee table there. Right, so that's what that does is be able, being able to add and remove objects inside the photo. Okay, we're cool with that. So that's what um, magic edit is. And then magic write, you guys all know, but I'm going to show you how we actually do that in social media. So here, uh, what we can do is start an upload. And what I can do is uh, upload a photo. So here's a photo of a home and I can right here say, use, uh, add to a template. Whenever you guys see this icon here, that means it's AI. So if I add a template, it's going to create all these social media collaterals for me. Hey, Catherine, um, absolutely. You can use it for virtual staging. You can remove an, uh, add items and things like that and declutter, um, for sure you can do that. So here's, here's my photo and here's all the different collaterals it created. Create an Instagram, Instagram post, Instagram post, different style, a greeting card, Facebook post, see here's the designs. I can um, ask it to, so mobile video, Facebook post, so uh, I can, ask it uh, to do that and I can add more media to it. So maybe I could have added my doggy, right? And here's all the different uh, templates it created using AI. And then I can also change the style. I can change it to cute and maybe use a different color palette. And so it created all of these different styles for me and actually added missing dog. <laughs> 
So if I click on this, then I can uh, customize it and then I can download it and then upload it to my social media. So you see, I didn't have to do much. I literally probably clicked five buttons and it created all of this stuff for me and it created all different options. So that's the power of AI is to be able to do that. Okay, moving right along, um, I'm running short on time again, but I wanna show you guys a few other tools. Uh, this is called a profile pick maker. So if you guys have ever seen the different designs of profile makers, uh, we can do that. Uh, so I'm going to upload a photo and this is gonna be a photo, let's see here. Photo of me that I had earlier. Let's see, upload. Screenshot. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is a profile pic of me and it's going to using AI generate all of these different styles of profile pictures. So see, it took, automatically took out the background and it generated all of these different things. So if you guys ever wondered and you wanted a customized background with your profile pictures for all your social media, this is a tool that you can do that with. Like literally it gave me like unlimited amount of them. And if you do do a paid version, it can give you kind of these kind of styles as well. So that's Profile Pick Maker. Uh, logo designs, if you ever wanted to design a logo for yourself, this AI tool will do that. And I'm gonna show you how this works. So I'm gonna say real estate, awesome real estate group. If I click get started, You're welcome, Kristen. I'm glad that you're here. All right, so uh, it asked me what industry, so I'm gonna go real estate. Let's do uh, real estate investing, just for fun. And then ask me to pick some logos that I like. So I'll say, I like this one. I like the clean ones. I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. And then I like this one. So I'm gonna hit continue. What colors do I like? So I'll say red. Company name, this is my company name. So I'll say continue, pick some symbols I like, real estate, home, house, real building, abstract, property, estate. So I'll pick those. So now it's gonna start generating. So literally I just went through a few clicks and it's gonna generate unique logos for me based on the colors that I liked, based on the name and the different styles that I like. So I can literally keep going and ask it to generate more. I like this one. This one's super cool, that's unique. Awesome real estate group. So really in the past, you had to hire a graphic designer to custom design all of this stuff. And within just a few short clicks, I was able to generate all these different logos that I could use. And they're all unique. So you could have downloaded this logo and then uh, be able to use it right away. If you want a full resolution version, you could just you know purchase it and purchase this program and make as many different kinds of logos as you want. So now we generated a logo. Let's see if we can create uh, a website from it. Okay, so this uh, program here called Gamma, right? So I'm gonna hit create new. And I'm gonna say, I wanna generate. And it asks me if I wanna generate a presentation, a document or a web page. So I'm gonna say web page. It's gonna tell me what topic is the web page. So I'm gonna say real estate. Company. All right, so I'm gonna say go.
and here's an outline for me, create some outline. I'm going to say, okay, continue. It's going to ask me what color and themes I want. So I'm going to say, choose this one. And I'm going to hit continue. So now it's going to start generating a website for me. And it's going to generate all of this copy based on real estate investments. Okay, it's generating all this stuff in real time. Our portfolio, testimonials. So all of this stuff after it's generated, you can just go ahead and edit and using this design. FAQs, contact us. Okay, so it just generated a page. So if you guys wanna see what this page looks like, um, let's see theme share. Okay, here's the link. I'm going to put the link in the chat here so you guys can pull it up and look if you want. But I could select any of these areas. If I want to change the mission statement, I can click on it. I can add sections. I can edit sections. I can do different layouts. So now you can start editing to your liking. Okay, so now that we've created a logo, a website, we can uh, also create some other images. This is my, this is the last one I'm going to show you today because we're coming short on time. This is called a Stable Doodle. It's really unique because what it does is it allows you to draw something to create images as opposed to um, as opposed to having to uh, type in a prompt, okay? And so uh, I'm going to see if I can give you a demo. All right, here. Okay, so here's my canvas. So let's say I want a dog, super terrible dog here because nobody knows how to draw. Here's the tail, and here's legs, All right? That's the best I can do. And I say a long-haired golden retriever dog, all right? So I say generate. Look at that. It created dogs for me. Didn't have a style, so I'll change the style. Let's say I'll change it to comic. So this is more of a artistic. So now instead, so now it made a drawing for me of a golden retriever. Okay, I can change it to another style, pixel art. So it didn't know anything except my text I give it, the, the, and then I drew an image of what I kind of wanted. So it's really fun to kind of get your creative juices going and to kind of create some images and create some art for yourself for whatever you need. It could be for a flyer, it could be for anything, right? So that one is a very interesting concept on how to generate uh, images using AI. Okay, cool. So that's my last demo. Let's go back to my slides. All right, so we went through Canva uh, and uh, one thing I would like for you guys to take away from this session is that before you create any kind of images or write anything, you can find an AI tool for it first. Okay, somebody made this color wheel of all the different kinds, but there's literally thousands. And the ones that we have gone through today are on here, Firefly, Midjourney, Canva, Leonardo AI, and there's just many, many more. Those are the ones that I found most useful and wanted to show you guys. So that's why I want to do that demo for you. But the, uh, but the Canva 
uh, is really a daily thing. Really, you can create any kind of social media or marketing materials. And then, uh, so uh, I thought this was interesting because this is how we used to call people. And then now we use the phone. So I want you to equate that to what the old way of doing things and then the new way of doing things with AI. Okay, so if you want to take anything away, I hope you can take that away. And uh, when you guys are exper experimenting with all of these AI tools, I want you to just be have an open mind and explore, acquire some new skills so that you can use it to your liking and then continue to improve on what you would like to have happen to get the best results possible. All right, that's it for me. Here are the resources I promised you. So if you got a phone, go ahead and grab it and uh, get those links in there. Uh, the first QR code is my mastermind so that you guys can stay in touch and be alerted of any of the other uh, mas uh, masterminds and uh, webinars that I'm giving. And the second one will give you all the slides of everything we talked about today and from this session and from the previous session. So definitely grab that. And lastly, I just want to thank you guys for being here. Here's my contact information. If you want to get a hold of me or reach out to me, uh, I'm always open to helping. And uh, today I'm uh, sort of on time. I'm one minute behind. Um, feel free to unmute if you have any questions. I can just stay for a couple of minutes. Um, and anything that uh, jumped out at you, uh, what did you get out of today? What was the highlight of today's session? Beverly, glad you were able to come. What was the one thing that uh, you, oh, I guess you left. Oh, yes, one second, give you the code. There you go. Make sure you grab that. I'll keep that up for now. Okay, hopefully you got it, Catherine. Great. All right, I will see you guys next time. Thank you for being here. And um, I hope you guys can uh, start using AI every single day, a little bit at a time and uh, get a lot of results from it. All right, have a good one, everybody. Bye, Michael. Bye, Colin. Take care.